Hey, this is Dave, and I'm here to give you some garden tips. Everybody likes garden tips. So what I got here is a trailer full of compost that I got from our landfill. People get to bring their leaves for free and their brush, and the town grinds up the branches and makes provides mulch free of charge for the Windsor residents. And they also compost the leaves provide compost and that's what we have here and they have lots and lots of compost and they, they turn it over and they add sand and they kind of mix it up this is a couple years old but it's all broken down there's some odds and ends in there some sticks some rocks some pine cones odds and ends so what I do is I get a, a load of my trailer I have this frame that has some heavy screening on it and I sift this. Now, I don't sift it in the little sense that I shake it around. I, I kind of push it through the, the screen. And what remains on the top are the rocks, maybe a couple of pine cones, some sticks, you know, odds and ends, things like that. And the soil, the compost, drops through. And I have some uh, really big buckets in here, three gallon buckets underneath the screen. So I kind of push this through. And I'm able to process this compost so that when I put it in the garden, it's just pure soil because there's no nutrients in the rocks. And sometimes it looks unsightly to have other debris in the garden. So this makes it nice and neat. Looks like store-bought compost. Takes a little work though, but the compost is free. So I put my time in, I process the compost, and then I put it in the garden. So I'm just going to do this for a little while so you can see kind of the motions. And um, this isn't something everybody wants to do. It is a bit of work. Sometimes it's easier to just buy compost. A lot of times that's costly. If you're uh, without work these days due to the pandemic, this is a way that you can preserve your uh, financial resources for more important things and you can do a little work while you have this time off and makes uh, tons and tons of compost for your, for your flower beds, your vegetable beds. You might even want to grow some grass in a bare spot in New York. This works out pretty well. You don't have to go to the extreme that I do. I have a trailer. I have a trailer hitch in a, in a van to pull it. I have access. Um, but you can use five gallon buckets. Like you could stop off, get some free compost if you live in Windsor. And you could use a, whatever screen you have. Just take a little frame or just lay it over the top of the bucket and kind of push it through. And you'll get some compost that looks pretty good. So, you might be able to hear it, but I just kind of push it around, just like this. You know, I'll find like a rock. I've got a bucket down here for rocks, and I use those later for I do potted soil, you know, pots and stuff. I'll put some rocks in the bottom for drainage. So, you get some free rocks out of this, too. And this barrel over here is for, like, sticks, pine cones. Sometimes you get a big wad of leaves that just never really got broken up, like there's a little wad of pine needles. You know, stuff like that. You could, you could get rid of it, dump it in the woods if you have it, or put it in the bottom of your garden as uh, organic material that'll break down further. But here's a couple more rocks. So I end up with plenty of rocks when I want to put uh, plants into a pot. And I get these for free with the compost. Because when they scoop it up and they turn it, they're, you know, this is a, a spot on top of the landfill where they buried garbage and you know there's there's some rocks there's color which is uh, broken up pieces of glass um, there's, you know, there's a blue piece here a little green piece I mean it's not it's been pushed around so much by the machinery that a lot of it is like sea glass it's not really all that sharp I've never gotten cut what I do is I wear gloves I have uh, these kind of gloves underneath these are like the pandemic gloves keep the cooties away and then I put this these heavier gloves on over it this way when I'm sifting the soil a lot of the soil tends to work its way into the gloves and it gets stuck under your fingernails and it's a little bit of work to clean up so what I do before I start is I put a bar of soap down I dig my nails through it like that get soap under my nails so it's kind of a barrier I put on the other gloves surgery gloves 
and these heavier ones, these take a beating, these get worn out. The tips are all worn out, but they're close kind of through them. So I got some old gloves that I keep recycling for this. As they get beat up, I switch them out to some newer ones. So everything I'm doing here doesn't cost a dime, other than the time that you would put put aside to do this. There's a couple more smaller rocks. I don't pick them all out, but the ones that look like they're going to be the right size for a flower pot, throw them down in this bucket here, and then all the loose organic debris I throw down here. And I have a compost pile out back where that stuff goes. So that just continues on its way, soil. That gets mixed in with my other items in there, orange peels, banana skins, onions, hops antelope, rinds, so I add grass clippings and compost, tailings, it's pretty rich, pretty rich mix that I work on throughout the year, and in the spring we put it in the garden. Here's a pine cone, this doesn't really break down all that well, so I just put that in the compost bin and let that continue. So it's really all not that hard. So I just, as you see, I just kind of push it through the screen. You can bang it like that if you want to get the last little bit. And what you have left here are like rocks. There's some rocks. Just go in the bucket there. Pick out the rocks. And these are just little sticks. Pieces of vine. Real smaller rocks. It just goes in that bucket there. That goes in the compost bin. Or I fill in a hole in the back if I have a spot that needs to be filled in. So I'm in the I'm in the shade basically. And it's uh, something if you uh, find this type of work tedious, you got a wireless headset. You listen to some music or a podcast, talk to your friends. Or you can uh, just have a regular radio out here and listen to some music. It's all up to you what you want to do. I find it very peaceful just to listen to all these birds. You probably hear them in the background. So this is like some peaceful, peaceful time for me to, let me see, here's like a, some kind of a piece of plastic. This might have been a potato chip bag or, and there's odds and ends. I have a garbage can over there for that type of stuff. But as we get thrown out. So it's got to just some quality time. You know, I'm standing up, I'm not hunched over. I, ergonomically, this is comfortable for me. And uh, it's nice to kind of be connected with your garden in a way that you can do these things kind of piecemeal when you feel like it. And kind of always have a plan on how you're going to do things and have a plan that doesn't involve a lot of financial uh, commitment. This is all just my time. And if you're the kind of person who likes TV, you could probably put a TV out here. Watch TV while you're doing this. It's, everybody has a different idea how to tolerate monotonous work. I have a high tolerance for monotony. There's <laughs> always, uh, my mind's always racing around with ideas and things I want to do and things I want to think about figure out in my head, so it's just kind of just some quiet time for me. You see the cottonwoods coming down? I kind of get a little more in touch with nature. You get to hear the birds kind of be in the middle of a snowstorm. That's really just cottonwood seeds. You kind of get more attached to the to nature. The more you're outside. You also have a bird bath nearby. I can watch the birds frolicking in the water. It's kind of fun. We have bird nest boxes all over here, all around. So there's always wrens yelling at you because you're getting too close. Or other kinds of birds. We got skunks, woodchucks, squirrels, foxes, all kinds of critters. They don't seem to bother anybody. They're just doing what they do. We do have a fox to kind of mark this territory on the compost bin. Their typical way they mark things with their scent and their poop. And that's fine. 
every once in a while we'll have ribs or some really good food that has some bristle and we put it out behind the compost box. And the fox picks it up, eats it up. I found out if I put that stuff in the garbage can, they knock the garbage can over because it ferments and gets smelly and they're like, ooh. Knock over the garbage can, and they get they get the food anyway. So I'm also just make it easy. Unless where's a little lollipop cover? <laughs> so I got a little garbage can there for that. Food. So this, this is kind of a peaceful, peaceful hobby for me. Now we have raised beds. The reason for that, people ask me, it's like a lot of work. Well, we don't have any alternative here because all our soil is clay. Try playing anything in clay. You're just gonna have a garden that just doesn't work right. When it rains, all the water's on top of the clay, floods out plants. They don't really grow because the roots can't get in the dirt. You can't really till it and weed it because anything that does grow is like clay weeds. It's really like the only way to get it out of the ground is dynamite. <laughs> so we've raised beds get our garden up above the clay and have some very rich soil and that works out great for us in the spring the raised bed tends to warm up very quickly and our tomatoes actually uh, grow very very quickly even when it's cold out because the raised bed warms up and they like the warmer soil so it works out really good we have uh, a wooden box around our raised bed that kind of holds all the dirt in, makes it look nice and neat. We've got an electric fence that keeps the wood chick, a wood chuck convinced that he, he, should, he or she should stay out of the garden. Uh, but there's plenty of flowers and there's plenty of other things that aren't aren't protected with that. So plenty of other things to eat. And the wood chucks do live around here and they're nice and fat and they have babies. So they pay the electric fence a lot of respect and they still are able to hang around around here. We have lots of woods, so they have a habitat. We have flowers and they like to eat the flowers. And we've got perennials, so they come up every year and we always have more than we need and we always spin them out. And well, the woodchucks help us spin them out. So they're doing their part to keep everybody happy, everything balanced. There we go. This is sticks, little rocks, a little bit of color. There we go. So that's that. So I just push this out of the way. Here's the compost I sifted. It gets caught in these buckets. So here's a, here's a bucket of compost. Nice and rich, nice and fluffy. No debris. Feels good to put that in the garden. So I put it into the wheelbarrow and some of these other pots. Just kind of dump them in. Uh, I usually end up with about three. Each each load that I sift, I get about three uh, containers of soil. And some of it misses the buckets. So the buckets are round. So you kind of grab the, the piles that are surrounding the barrels and just kind of put them in there like that. Here's another container of There's another one here. Got three. But the next thing I do is I just take my shovel I leave that screen up front like that. I just throw it up there like this. Because where I'm digging is where those buckets go. It's, uh, pretty easy to do this. You, you want to use a pointy shovel because you can get in the dirt easy. If you use a coal shovel with a flat end on it, it's kind of a, tough to get a purchase on the dirt to get it underneath. So you want to use a pointy shovel. It's one spade. Just throw it up there like that. I just kind of level it out. I like use a big old stick. 
not a big deal. Get a lot. Sometimes I find treasure in here. Found a switchblade once and a padlock. Kind of rusty looking, but kind of an artifact you might find in a shipwreck or in the woods, kind of an abandoned house. Put these buckets down here. I have some more over here. So these are catching the soil as I sit there. So we've got six barrels, buckets, three gallon pails of dirt. I just pull this over. And go to town. Right off the bat, here's a couple of sticks right over there. Push it through. So, that's how this is done. I'm going to take you over to the garden to show you what I'm doing with all this compost today. So when I fill this up, the dirt's going to come across here. So these lower leaves are going to be underground. So what I do is I knock off the tips of the leaves and leave the stem. And what that does is that's the start of a root that will become a root that will pull moisture into the plant. But I found it's very important to get the leaves off. There we go. So, right there. So, that's going to be your, if you think of that root, it's going to be like my hand. So all those little fuzzies are going to turn into little rootettes. And this thing is going to be a very, very extensive root system. So, the key though, knock off the leaves. Because if you don't, the plant gets sick. The leaves rot. And it pulls in like bacteria and cooties or what. I don't know what it does. It just, it doesn't do well. There's a sucker right there. So there's, so this really makes these plants very, very strong and resilient when we do have hotter weather because this, these are, these become roots that pull in moisture. So then I just backfill like this, get some more dirt. We just bury them branches that were. There we go. So we're going to go right up to the top of this wood box. This one here needs a little more trimming. So I'm just going to take a couple, a couple of the leaves off right at the very beginning where it's kind of low. There we go. There we go. So anything that's going to be in the ground, there we go. So I'm going to do something like this. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. So all this is sifted compost that I made from compost from the dump. This is all free. Just a little time and effort to sift out the rocks and uh, other organic materials that still need to break down more. Okay, so let's go to this one. Okay, so this one's next. So, knock off the leaves like this. I don't think very many people have seen this technique this is something I recently came across on the internets. And the person who explained this was a uh, award-winning tomato grower person. So there we go. Uh, take a more off here. Little tiny leaves here, like that, and that. There we go. So, the level of the dirt is going to be here, so anything below it has to have these leaves removed. Okay. Bring it 
backfill it like this. Plants about two feet, two feet in the ground already below this bed. This bed is almost a foot tall, so we got three feet of stem, and these are already some very huge tomato plants. But all you're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. Everything else is the support for the rest of the plant. There we go.